Okay, here we go. We are at a new section. Here we go. Yes. Oh, you don't have the notes. Gotcha. I've got extra notes right here. I've just organized. And there's staples that I have to no, I don't know who that is. You don't remember Chappies? You don't know who that is. Oh, that's, that's yeah. Chappies. Look at that, Connor. Chappies. Look at that. I'm, on, I'm, on, the I'm on the ball. No, Watson. Who is that? Nobody. Okay. Okay, standard form. Standard form of a parabola is y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. That's what we learned before break. And in fact, you learned a little equation for finding the vertex. Does anybody remember the equation for finding a vertex? Involved a couple letters, a number, a positive or a negative sign. Negative b divided by 2 8. Negative b divided by 2 8 was the equation that you used to find the x value of the vertex in standard form. Right? Yeah. We have a different form, and that is called vertex form. A vertex form looks like this. Y is equal to a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. The difference in the forms is that one has a completed square and the other one does not have a completed square. See the difference between two? So letter A, is that in standard form or is it in vertex form? It's in standard form. The directions are to place it in vertex form. Express it in vertex form. I want to be clear. On the test, you might be like, Mr. Gens, I don't need to do your way. I can do negative b over 2a every single time. Great. You do negative b over 2a for that problem. I give you one out of four points. Okay? Because you have to know how to do the completing square of the vertex piece because you're going to use it second semester. And you will not be successful unless you start doing it now. So here we go. I want to show this as a completed square. By the way, people have wondered about y equals and f of x. Y and f of x are interchangeable, um, you know, 99% of the time. Basically, 100% of the time in this class, if you see a y, it's the same thing as f of x, f of x, same thing as y. So I'm going to complete the square. And you guys are excellent at completing the square. You've seen it a few times in my class, in Ms. Kruger's class, in Ms. Hansen's class. So I have x squared minus 6x. I'm going to put the 1 off to the side over there. Everybody okay with how I've kind of divided that up right now? What number do you add to complete the square? 9. Everybody agree with 9? Okay. So here's where people get lost. I'm going to do my very best to explain this. Please help me if I don't do a good job, okay? If I add a 9 to one side, I've, I've tilted the equation, right? So what do I have to do in order to even it out? Add 9 to the other add side. Add 9 to the other side. That will make sense, right? So here's the problem. If you add 9 to the other side, there's nowhere to add the 9 to. Like it used to be there was a number over there. Now there's an f of x. But you ain't add a 9 to f of x, right? So here's what I want you to understand. I'm going to go back to my demonstration here. I added 9 to one side, so I could also subtract 9 from that same side. Right? Like, think about it. If I've got, if I've got a balance and I add 9, but I also pull 9 off, then I'm, I'm back in balance, aren't I? So if I add 9, I could also subtract 9. Plus 9. Is everybody okay that that's a legal option? Because if I add 9 and subtract 9, what's the net change? Zero, right? Net change is zero. So I get f of x is equal to, I've got x minus 3 quantity squared minus 8. That's in completed vertex form. That's the work I need to see you do on your test to add and subtract the 9, come up with this vertex form piece. So the vertex is, whoa, why did you do that? The vertex is going to be the horizontal shift and the vertical shift. What is the horizontal shift of this graph? Three. Three units to the right. What's the vertical shift? Eight. eight units down. That's the vertex. So I don't have to do a negative b over 2 I can just look at it and identify. 
Okay, I'm gonna plot. I'm gonna just make a quick sketch here. Two, four, six, eight. You getting a cold there, dude? Yeah, I have one. Had one. I, my throat's feeling kind of scratchy. I'm worried it's coming on to me too. Uh oh. Yeah, I'm worried. Three negative eight. So I go over three and I go down eight. Does this problem go up or down? Up. Up. So is it going to have a minimum value or maximum value? Minimum value. Minimum value of? Negative 8. Not too bad, huh? Yup. It's going to get more difficult, right? Like, we just looked at a very basic example. Bruh. Bruh. Yeah. Uh, this sheet is just kind of an organizer. If you need to see differences between a uh, vertex form and a standard form, well, let's press on to this. What's different about example B? What do you know what's different about example B? There's no C value. There's no cost value. That's what everybody says. There's something else I want you to recognize. Negative x squared. Negative x squared. And so completing the square, we got to remove that negative first. So I have f of x is equal to, I'm going to factor out the negative to get a positive x squared, and it's going to be a minus 4x. Everybody okay with that? What number do you add to point square? Plus 4. Benjamin is correct. No, Grant said it first. What do you go, Grant? I didn't say anything. <laughs> I thought somebody over there said it first. You got it, Grant. So okay, if I added it, four, then what else do I do to the same side? Subtract. Except I don't. Okay, I told you we're going to get a little bit more challenging. I want you to look at this. I did not just add four. What did I actually do? The true value of that four is not positive four. The true value of that four is negative four. So if I had, if I just put on a value of negative four, then I need to add, add four. four. One. So I'm, see what I'm saying here? Got to think about that negative out front. That's important. So now I've got f of x is equal to I got a negative and it's x minus two quantity squared plus four. What's the vertex? Positive 2, positive 4. So I'll sketch that graph. Positive 2, positive 4. Right side up or upside down? There's my parabola. Is that of a maximum value or minimum value? Yeah, they're throwing things. I'm ready to go out there and bust some heads. Okay. Last example for the day. What's different about this one? Two X. Yeah. Two in front. Got a two in front, and we then we got a three in the middle. You can see we're gonna come up with a fraction here. Oh. We need some. We we need some uh, work with fractions. We all know that that's an issue. F of X is equal to two times X squared. It's going to be minus a 3 halves x when you factor out that 2, 3 halves. And I'm not going to factor the 2 out of the negative 1 because I want space here to complete my square. So I'm just going to write minus 1. A lot of people get really angry about the minus 1 not having factored it out. You've done that many times, folks. Suppose you had x cubed plus 3x squared plus 4x plus 12 and you wanted to factor that. Isn't it the case that sometimes you just group certain things together? So you take an x squared out of there, but you don't take an x squared out of the next set, do you? Nope. So it's okay to take a 2 out of part of it, but not all of it. We've done that before. It, it doesn't change the value of the expression. So there I have it. I've got this. Um, the question now is what number do we add here to complete the square? So take 30 seconds, talk to the person next to you, see if you can come up with that number. Uh, very few people have come up with it so far. Talk, go. Ten seconds.
Oh, it's over. Did you fall in the record? Do you know those paper things? Okay, what number did you add? Five eights. Five eights, excellent choice, incorrect. Nine sixteen. Nine sixteen. Give it up for Benjamin. Yeah. Woo. Who else got it? Who else? You had nine sixteen. Nine sixteen. Okay. Let's see how we got it. You take the three halves and you divide it by, which is the same time. Same thing as multiplying by a half, right? So you get three fourths. Then what do you have to do that three fourths? You square, square it. it. So you get nine over sixteen. Great. Now we got to figure out what we do to the other side. You're like, well, I'm going to subtract 9 16. But Mr. Gens got kind of tricky on that last one where he decided that he would show you that what's out front really matters. And so the true value of that is not 9 16, but rather 18 16 or 9 8, right? So if I added 9 8, then I should also subtract 9 8. Okay? So now you can see that the number is entirely different. So there we go. We've got f of x is equal to 2 times. How does that piece factor? x minus 3 over 4. Quantity squared. I got a negative 1 minus 9, 8. So my fifth grade teacher told me to change that negative 1 to a negative 8 over 8. Negative 8 eighths minus 9 eighths is... 17 over 8. Looks like I have a vertex located at 3 fourths is the horizontal shift. Negative 17 eighths is the vertical shift. So um, I'm just going to make a 2 by 2 graph. Doesn't have to be anything special. We're just going to get a general graph down, get a little bit of an idea what the shape looks like. I'm going to go over 3 quarters to the right, and I'm going to go down 17 eighths. 17 eighths is about how much? Just over 2. Just over 2. So I'm going to go down a little bit more than 2. Okay. Goes up. So does it have a max or a min? Minimum value of negative 17 over 8. There you go. Tell you what, we'll skip the word problems in this unit. In fact, we'll skip them for the whole piece before the test. We'll throw them at the end of the semester instead. Okay. Hopefully that will help the scores go higher for this test. Uh, but so you're set to go. Now, uh, some people have been a little bit chirpy about the length of the assignment. I can make it look a lot shorter by just giving you book assignments instead. But then you got to lug around the book. So let's just understand how uh, quick this can be so that you guys are on the same page with me. Um, yes, there are three pages to this, but a lot of it is just room to show your work and directions. So the first one is y equals x squared plus 2x. So if you complete the square on that one, what do you add to complete the square? 1. So you're also going to subtract 1. So look, that problem took us a whole of what? 20 seconds. What? You can see that the vertex is negative 1, negative 1. You're good to go. So, um, you know, there, it's not like there's just a ton of work required in some of these problems. I get it. If you got a fraction, it's going to take you a little bit longer, but that's that's all you're trying to do. So, I told Nate to sit down with the chairs. Over. Look at that. Hey, look at it out there. There's hope yet. <laughs>